Consequence Podcast Network. Just rip the band-aid off already. The first festival of festival season coming and going, Lollapalooza 2021. By all accounts, a massive success. But what will happen in the next two weeks? What will happen in the next two months? As cases begin to rise again across the country, the future of festivals is as shaky as ever. Dissecting what went right, what went wrong at Lollapalooza 2021 on the What Podcast. Which bands this year that matter? Barry Corder, Lord Taco, Brad Steiner. It starts right now. The What Podcast, which bans this year that matter on a big, big day where we say it's going to be a short show, but it's probably going to be an hour and a half. It's Lord Taco, Barry Quarter, Brad Steiner. Uh, so much to get to today. I don't even want to say, Barry, that it's going to be a short show because every time I say that, I feel like it's some sort of jinx. Yeah. Yeah. It's <laughs> it's sort of like, uh, how long do you think this project will last? Oh, it's going to be a quick one. No, no. It's... Uh, so much to get to. Let's uh, go around the room first off and just say hello to uh, the stranger, this new uh, member of the podcast, a man in his bus. Hi, Hi I'm Russ. new. Uh, where you been? I've been all over, man. Uh, it's been a week at the lake in the bus. Uh, came came back, got a little sore throat, laid out for a week. Mm-hmm. It's not what you think it was. Oh, I bet it wasn't. Yeah. I bet it wasn't. <laughs> I know. I know you got that sore throat. Uh, Barry, how you feeling? COVID free? Feeling okay? COVID free? All good. Yeah. I'm not. Yep. Uh, I'm not going to lie to you. After five days in Chicago, going to get that test tomorrow. Mm-hmm. I am uh, uh, going to get that test now. I feel great, but you know, you just can't go and do what I did and not get tested afterwards. And it will be my first ever COVID test. I had my first ever a couple weeks ago. Did you really? Yeah. And why it's, it's so weird that after post vaccination is when I get my first COVID test. Mm-hmm. Yeah, Barry, I've never had a test. You haven't had the swab yet. No, but I, my question would be: I get it because you want to know, but what's it going to change? I know what's it going to do. I mean, I was an idiot today. I already went to work. I mean, by the time I got in the building, I was like, you know what? I really probably shouldn't be here until I find something out. You know what I mean? Well, I, <laughs> okay, there is that angle. There is that angle, and that's that's a legit angle. Let me ask you this: Did you go to uh, the Cautious Clay after party? So that's where I think things got a little nutty. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so I, I'll go you through my uh, my entire week here at Lollapalooza and um, some of the things that I learned and and things that I've brought back. But, uh, you know, I just I the one thing I want to get out of the way real fast is those guys and those people that were worried that Lizza would be washed up by the time Bonnaroo came around and that she wouldn't have any hits or her time would have been expired. Oh, my God, is she about to drop a banger? She has got a song that is going to come out August 13th that is just full of one liners. It is as good as a Lizzo song could be. She's got it, and uh, I don't think you need to worry about anything when okay. it comes to that Lizzo show. All right, so I got to rethink, I gotta rethink my schedule. Okay. Yeah. Uh, I don't have a release date on the album, but um, the Good. stuff that I've heard, it's going to be just fine. Excellent. They're going to do just fine. Good. Um, so now that that's out of the way, Lollapalooza was fascinating. I think if you followed along at all on Twitter, you know, you, you sort of, probably know a lot that I'm going to say, but I get there Wednesday night and uh, this is where it's like I've never listened to myself. What is my number one rule, guys, about Thursday night at Bonnaroo? It's your Don't favorite. go too hard. Don't go, Don't too go hard. hard. Don't, Don't go, go hard. hard. Why? Yeah. Because it screws up the rest of the week. That's right. I violated that rule before too. Oh my God, guys. Oh God. Really? Really? <laughs> you went total rookie. Total rookie move. I wow. on Wednesday night I had an industry dinner 
Uh, just to start this, like the reason I go to Lollapalooza every week, every year is mainly because, and I know this sounds weird, but I don't really go for the festival. I go because it is the biggest industry event of my year. Everybody that is in my industry essentially is at Lollapalooza. And it's sort of like if you sold bathtubs and you didn't go to the convention where all the new Chrome pieces were being sold. If I didn't go, I would be derelict of duty. So every hour of my day is packed with something. You know, I've got somebody that I've got to meet for some drink or some coffee or some food it, constantly, right? Early Wednesday, when I get there, I immediately have got ushered into a lunch meeting full of drinking. And then as soon as I get out of that, I go to meet my boss, previous um, What Podcast guest, Troy Hansen. It was the uh, first time I have ever met him. Um, and we actually spent hours together hanging out at KQX in Chicago. And I got to see the, the facilities and talk to him about life and, and work and stuff like that. Then it was time for dinner. And by then, um, dinner is uh, uh, full of sake. And then another bottle of sake. And another bottle of sake. And another bottle of sake. And then, of course, you can't just leave dinner and go to the hotel like a responsible person. You got to go to that after drink, right? You got to get that after beer. Well, we get that after beer. And then, of course, the second that I hadn't decided to go home and rest for the weekend, industry person starts ringing me up. And I've got another person that's out and about in the same part of the neighborhood that I am in. I'll just pop in. I'll pop in and say hi and just, you know, schmooze for a little bit. And then I'll leave. So I'm right next to the hotel. Well, what happens as soon as I get there? Bottle of bottle of wine. Oh, and now we're all going to go across the city to the nightclub that I own and where everybody's drinks are going to be paid for. So let's go to the nightclub. Well, all of a sudden it's 2.30 in the morning and I'm finally getting home and I'm, I'm finally sleeping, ready for my big Thursday. I wake up and Barry, for the first time in, I don't know, a decade. What do you think happened? I'm guessing you didn't feel well. Didn't feel well and a puke. Uh, oh, first day out of the gate. Wow. Did you call Ralph? Did you call Ralph, did did you call Ralph call on the big Ralph, white telephone? Wow. And it was. Um, you ever drank battery acid? Because I'm, I think that I did at some point. Probably. Because that's what came out. It I'm, was, in, I'm kind of embarrassed for you. <laughs> I mean, so, this is this like your first convention? First time you ever been in the big city, Brad? First week. <laughs> Uh, I don't know what what was I thinking? First time I, in the big city, huh? I came up all the way up there from Louisiana, and I'm ready oh, to see gosh. them cities. I uh, it was a disaster, guys, an absolute shit show. So Thursday was rough, really, really rough. But it really the best thing that ever happened to me was was getting rid of that battery acid in my body. <laughs> um, so. <laughs> So then Thursday happens and it's time to get into the festival. Well, I did the very, very smart thing. And I was staying in River North, which is just uh, north of the city. And I walked all the way there, which is a good mile, mile and a half to the thing. Great decision. I got to burn off some of this stuff. I got to, you know, sweat a little bit. And that's when I started to see sort of the giant tent that you had to walk in to present your um, cards and your negative tests. Now, along the way, it was a lighter day. I'm not going to lie. It's the first day of all blues up. I don't see anybody trying to sell fake vaccine cards. The line was sort of long to get in, but nothing, nothing was like the line across the street, directly across the street at the Crown Plaza Hotel, which is a very large hotel. But the line to get into this place was massive. I mean, there must have been 500 people standing in line down the street, around the block, and I never saw the end of the line. And it was kids with luggage just waiting to check into the hotel. Why were they waiting outside? Because when you walked in, they checked your bag for guns, explosives, etc. Every single person got their luggage checked for guns and explosives. And why this is, is that? The, this is into the hotel. Just to check into the hotel. You could not wow. bring a bag that was not checked previously. And why is that? Because that was the same hotel that the Las Vegas shooter booked. And he would plan to do that four years ago before he did Las Vegas. So although I don't remember ever seeing them do that, and I've made that walk every year on the first day, 
I just have never seen it like that before. So with all that being said, we get into the venue. Now, did I, they check you when you checked into your hotel? No, no, not like that. No, I was I was across the river, and even if you got to, even if you got like I even asked Blackstone, which is a really you know prominent hotel, you know a lot of art, artists stay in down the road. Uh, I asked if they were doing the same thing, and they say no. We just have really really tight security. You couldn't get into the hotel without a band that said Blackstone. In fact, if you go back and watch some of the coverage you'll see some of the artists wearing the Blackstone band. Uh, I know Young the Giant had one on. I noticed it because I was walking by. I was like, oh, yeah, he's got that Blackstone hand, uh, wristband on. Um, so It's good marketing. But, yeah, with all that being said, they, um, the Thursday was pretty light. I was asked on Twitter if you know the number that they had put out that we sort of calculated to be about 30K was right for the rest of the night. And the guy told me, yeah, that was about right. Uh, so 30K was the number on, on Thursday. And we get to that number because they came up with this percentage that 90% of the attendees were vaccinated. 8% were or had shown a negative test within 72 hours. So that left 2% that had to be turned away at the door. That equals 600 people by their calculation, by their math. So you just do basic math here. And when I say basic, far more advanced than what I can do, which is why I called Barry. And Barry told me that that equates to about 30,000 people. After so, much, uh, yeah, after much discussion. <laughs> yeah, it was tough. And then, you know, yeah, by the math. way, the reason why I know your number is right is because we drove in on Friday with two 15-year-olds in the back seat. Um, these 15 year olds are a friend of mine's daughter and her new boyfriend. And within, I said this whole thing to them. And within two seconds, he's like, Oh yeah, you do the X and the Y and the blah, blah, blah. It's 30. I was like, oh, yeah. Kid. Yeah. Well, oh, every kid is smarter than me. <laughs> oh, so, they got new math. Yeah. Oh, jerks. So the, um, so that, that ends up being a very light day for them. Friday, very heavy, got much bigger. Saturday was the biggest day. I learned that that Saturday ticket sales were the biggest one day ticket sale that Lollapalooza has had because, and they give all the credit to Limp Biscuit. Wow. Stunning. But Journey's there, Megan the Stallion is there, but they think it's because of Limp Biscuit. Wow. And give them, you know, all the shit that you want to. Everybody's talking about them. Uh, they got a new song that came out today. At least they're in the conversation. They've got people talking. And for the first time in 20 years, they're on the, the edge of somebody's lips, which is. Turns out it's all because of Fred Durst. He's his own manager. He's his own booking agent. Um, I heard the story. I don't know if I should. I don't know if I could tell this, but when you when you cut the check, you cut the check to Fred Durst. Wow. Wow. <laughs> That's funny. I never thought about that. Yeah. Not um, some like uh, LLC or anything like that. Nope. You're right at the bread. Yeah. <laughs> Personal. He figures Cash. it out from the rest. He figures That's it hilarious. Out from there. <laughs> yeah. um, so I think James Brown used to do that, actually. Or George so, Clinton. I know George Clinton did. Oh, really? Interesting. I, I, um, I then get this question on Twitter that uh, they're hearing a lot of fake um, uh, vaccine cards that people are selling fake vaccine cards. I didn't know. So I went on a mission to, you know, ask some kids and they had heard the same thing. I don't know how rampant it was, but all I know you're a piece of shit. If that's what you do, <laughs> whether you sell one or buy one, you're probably a piece of shit. Um, you know, it's just, how hard is it to, for you to go get a test? You know, how hard is that? Is that going to break your, is that going to ruin your day? Wow. I mean, there, there are five Walgreens within walking distance of Lala Blues. You can't go get a test. Um, so I just I just picture you going up. How do you do, fellow kids? Hello. <laughs> Hello, people. Anyone know where to get a fake vaccine card? I like <laughs> Megan the Stallion. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Let me assist you, young people, with some knowledge that I'd like to share. You kids Definitely look not like a two hip young kids. <laughs> yeah. Definitely not an art. I will tell you, Taco. Um, I the uh, I wanted to see how long the line on Saturday was just nuts to get in. So I walked up to a kid. Uh, or was it Friday? 
I can't remember. I literally walked up to a group of kids and um, I said, hey, youngins. Um, <laughs> I didn't say that. Uh, but I said, hey, guys, uh, how long did it take you to get in? And the, <laughs> the kids stopped in their tracks and they gave me one of these. <laughs> Just looking me up and down like I was wearing a wire. Um <laughs> And Welcome his, to my world, Brad. His, <laughs> Welcome yeah. to my world. And his answer was, a couple of minutes. <laughs> <laughs> That's like not very long in your lifetime, Pops. Yeah, yeah Pops. <laughs> Grandpa, go fix did, the VCR. Did you, give them the, did you give them the guns? Hey, hey. guys. <laughs> hey, you radical bros. Come here for a second. Uh, I'm going to talk to you. <laughs> oh, man. <laughs> you want to go down to Nickelodeon and catch a flick? Yeah. Which, they, uh, which, which one of these hip rap stars are you here to see? <laughs> <laughs> um, so according to them, you know, again, time in kid language, it's a lot different than us. So I never really got a, a solid answer about that. Actually, this is a really important call. I do need to answer this here one second. Hang on. Hey, how are you? It's one of those kids, Russ. Yeah. <laughs> Hello, kids. I've, Hello, I've sir. Been. I Would have you, your are answer. You, are you available here in like 15, 20 minutes and I can call you back? 15, 20 minutes? We got a show. That's Brad World. Right. Sorry, sorry, hour. sorry, sorry. <laughs> um, so um, that was a... a that, I'm not even going to tell you that was. It doesn't matter. I'm no, so Brittany sorry. Hay in 15 oh. minutes. Thursday was um, was light. Then um, I had this, this incredible, incredible dinner on Thursday. Yes, I left the festival at six o'clock. I don't think I made it past seven at any point in the week. Beat me up all you want to. I don't care. I, I just, I, I, sorry. I, 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 it is, it is a convention for me. It is, it is a work event. I I just can't spend every night at Lollapalooza. I know. Now there's somebody the new chrome faucets are in. You got to go check them out. I've got to check these bath fittings. All right. (laughs) These are big deals. I could get a discount on them. Um, so, have on Friday pin. is uh Friday is a good, by the way, Thursday, Black Pumas are incredible. Incredible. I, I just can't say enough about this live show for a band that has, I mean, they've done plenty of shows, but I just have never seen a band get into this rhythm and this in the pocket. Like they are as quick as they have. This show is incredible. And, and Eric is a complete sweetheart. This guy, I love the, I love Eric. He's, he's the lead singer of Black Pumas. He's one of these guys that no matter who you are, where you are, how you are he is going to talk to you for damn near an hour doesn't matter who you are he will stop you they have to put i was felt so bad i ran into eric after the show and we just we were talking and i had to be the one that said eric man i've got to go i (laughs) i got to get out of here i love you but i I, there's i you're talking my head off man um he's a sweetheart though i really really do love him so their show was great and friday comes friday was a um you know how i said wednesday was some bad life decisions well let me tell you about the day i was pimping out some teenagers oh, um uh, so you too first <laughs> you barry too? And now you all right wait wait we're back me. on this horse all right so cautious clay if you have not listened to the cautious clay episode of this show that we did a couple of weeks ago i implore you to go back and listen to this That's great. i really feel as though if i have any credibility whatsoever i'm putting it on the line for cautious clay i think this guy's got frank ocean written all over him his show at at bottom lounge you know it felt to me like early and i said this as manager it felt to me like early lizzo Really, really early Lizzo, where you see she, she's got something and she's figuring it out on the stage. And the next time you see Lizzo, it gets a little bit bigger. And the next time you see her, it gets bigger. And then all of a sudden, it's this massive operation. I think that's where Cautious is going. Um, Deadpan Love is such a good, good album. And, you know, the way that he was explaining to us, the way that he's writing and how prolific he is, it's just not going to stop. He'll have another EP out in the next couple of months, yeah. it feels like, the way that he's writing. So It was, it was a great show. I've, I've, had, I've had lots of positive comments on that show. So it, I agree well, with you. Please go listen to it. Please do, because, like, the, the, the club show was incredible. It was incredible. The audience knew every word. And the best part is, Barry, at the Bottom Lounge in Chicago, Illinois, Hams on Draft. <laughs> Nice. I had a hams on draft. Good for you. No PBR? 
You know, they didn't have PBR. Oddly enough, they had hams on draft. It was nuts. Did you Frankly, it? I <laughs> yes, yes, I did. In, <laughs> in a in a way, I finished it. Yes. Good. Should I, we should we jump in now? And uh, I, I those uh, Parker and uh, they're they're kind of in mourning right now because apparently some some beers have been taken off the. That's right. The, the uh, shelves. you see I, that, Ross? The, the, yeah, the you, the Ryan. hams. Yeah, hams special light or something. It's like the yeah. light version special of special light and Mickey's. It's, uh, it's, it's, yeah, they're getting they're, they're getting the axe. They're kind of in mourning right now, the ham yeah. guys. But yeah. uh, I didn't know there were like sub ham beers. You know, I didn't oh, know there were multiple versions of the hams. They're scrambling. They're sending out everybody to go check all the liquor stores in the area and figure out. Can we get some, you know, like last, you know, what whatever's left on the shelves, they just want to grab it up. I'll be you gotta honest with be you, kidding. Brad, these are these are the beers that I drank when I was twenty years old and couldn't scrape together a buck eighty nine. They're so not good beers. <laughs> there are multiple different versions <laughs> of hams. Yeah. You're telling me. Yeah, oh yeah. yeah wow. there's a, I'm I'm stunned. I'm stunned. Yeah. There's the multiple mi- different versions of PBR. Well, I knew that because I mean, look at you. I mean, I, I know all every piece of PBR. He's a news. Renaissance man. I'm I'm all of them rolled into one. <laughs> man, if you could be the next PBR product, <laughs> then we've got something. I've always seen I've seen the hams can, but I've never seen a hams on draft. I've Have never you? seen that in my life. No. Yeah, hmm. and uh, was a um, what Mickey's? I told you there were several. There's like several that they're they're suspending uh, production of. And, and they posted that they're sort of in mourning, so it's kind of mm. funny. It's not good beer, trust well, me. Well, this, well, I know, but you know, we're we're getting eerily close to treading on a show that's about Bonnaroo and about hams, and I think that's taken. It's taken. We'll okay. leave it for that. <laughs> that that niche is filled. I like it, but good for uh, you for having one, huh? I, that's I mean, funny. yeah, I mean, it was. Um, I I thought I took a picture of it, but you know. Things got blurry. Let's see, so that. you had sake, battery acid, wine, and then hams on draft. You had yeah, quite well, this, the uh, you had quite the weekend. Thursday though, Thursday felt uh, manageable. Thursday felt really good. Uh, I'm trying to remember what I did Thursday. I feel like you I puked. kept it. I, no, no, that was Thursday morning. I did Thursday <laughs> night. I was back on the horse. I was ready to go Thursday. Puked, puked and rallied. Puked and rallied. Puked yeah, and rallied. rallied. Great. Friday woke up great and went to the um, to the cautious clay show. Show was terrific at Bottom Lounge, had the hams, and then decided to go out to a nightclub that was packed. Uh huh. Uh huh. Okay. I snuck in teenagers. Uh-huh. Um, something. Oh. I snuck in teenagers to this, this nightclub. Why? Because a influential person in the industry gave me forty dollars to give to the door guy so that I could get these teenagers in. Apparently, because these teenagers are in a band, um, so it just got weirder from there, dude. It got so strange. I mean, I, I was at this nightclub that had like seven stories to it. Every time I walked in, like I, I go up a, a stairwell, I'm in this brand. I mean, it's a bubble room. I go up another room. It's like a clown room. I go up another stair. It's like everything was like, it was a fern room. Nothing made any sense. I thought I was in some sort of like bad trip that night. I rolled in about 430, 430. Well, let's go back because uh-huh. you and I spoke Thursday. Was it Thursday? Or Friday. I think it was Thursday. And you were having this great big moral, ethical, internal debate as to whether you were going to go to the Cautious Clay because yeah. of COVID. And it was a theater that had 800 people. Yeah. So and you were I, thinking you weren't going to do it because, you know, you're true. a concerned, uh, smart thinking citizen. I was. But a- apparently that all got uh, got blown well, up. Huh? Well, what happened was I said to myself, all right. And I said to the guy I went with, I said, uh, all right, we're going to. We'll go until we don't feel comfortable anymore. All right. So we'll go. We'll show up. We've got to say hi to the manager. We'll we'll do our due diligence. Hey, how are you? Good to see you. And then we'll stand in the back until we don't feel comfortable anymore. Man, you get a couple hams in you. You start making some bad decisions. <laughs> and um, they turn on the bubble machine. You yeah. Know. <laughs> so so I but the show in all honesty, the show was so good that I didn't want to stop. I, I just kept I was in engulfed with with what he was josh was doing on stage i thought it was so much better than i anticipated it and i just stayed and then it just got out of hand from there and um i woke up right saturday i wasn't hung over or anything but i had a people hangover i had a hangover of just being around too many people 
And I made a decision that is going to stun you. I'm going to absolutely stun and shock you with what I'm about to say. I'm waiting. I passed on Brittany Howard. <laughs> that's where I thought <gasps> you were going to go. Oh, no. That's who called, go. isn't it? Ten minutes ago. I got- <laughs> She's mad. She wants to know where the heck you were on where Saturday. Where were you? I couldn't do it. I just couldn't do it. You, I, I, I was around too many people. On Brittany Howard because because you what felt icky. I got, I, just, I, I got I felt creeped out. I felt really wow. really weird about being that packed and and making a terrible decision to go out afterwards to multiple places, mind you, not just a dumb nightclub, but multiple places. I just felt way it was way too much. So on Saturday. Man, I mean, I, I probably stepped into the festival for all of 90 seconds um, wow. because at that point, I just had really started to feel strange. Um, I didn't feel bad, but I had had my fill of like being packed in with people, right? Um, had an incredible dinner on Saturday. Uh, and, you know, for every, for, to every person I asked, that was involved in any of it. They felt really comfortable with the process and how everybody got in. Um, they felt really comfortable with, with the organization of it. I, I will say there is, there was a different set of, of rules for the people that were engaged, like walking into media and the backstage area and the regular GA passes. Regular GA had to go through a couple of different entrances Media could not go in those entrances. But artists could not go in those entrances. Their the artists, media, backstage all had to go through the same entrance, which was way down at the other end of the festival. And when you got there, you had to have a wristband that said vaccinated on it. And that wristband was the same wristband that all the staff had on. But no festival goer needed to have that, that, that uh, wristband, which I sort of misread when I first got there. I thought that everybody was going to be wearing this wristband, but I was told on uh, later that day, no, it's Friday. I told on Friday. The reason why they don't give the, the concert goers a wristband is because they think they'll take it off and give it to somebody. Mm. So all of this to be said, the long of this is Lollapalooza showed great caution they showed a really responsible atmosphere. They did all the right things and can fall back on feeling comfortable that they did it the right way. And I don't know if you noticed, but you know, right around the Lollapalooza time, what happened with Bottle Rock? Bottle Rock instituted the exact same policies that Lollapalooza put in. 72-hour negative COVID test, uh, vaccine-proof, Wear a mask if you're not, you know, that is pretty, I think that's going to be the standard operating procedure going forward. Now, you know, the gr- overarching question to all of this is, well, do you think the Bonnaroo is going to have a proof of vaccination or a t- negative go- COVID test within 72 hours? I just don't see how Bonnaroo can institute the same things that Lollapalooza put in. I, there's just no way this makes sense in my mind. Lollapalooza asked for a negative COVID test within 72 hours, which means if you got your COVID test on Wednesday and it showed to be negative, you would have to have another one by Sunday to get in for the Foo Fighters. How exactly is that going to work if somebody is driving from Iowa on a Tuesday? Right. Where are they going to get tested when they're in the middle of a field when that 72-hour becomes expired now are do you just assume that because you are in a space where everybody has tested negative uh, you're safe maybe 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 you maybe that that works but i don't know um it it just the what i gained from all of this was lollapalooza at least has the ability of saying that they did everything they could to make it a safe space. I just don't know if that's going to bear out yeah. to be true. Yeah. We have we have 10 days here, two weeks here to, to see the ramifications of it. Now, again, I don't know how you you trace back to whoever went to Lollapalooza, you know, 
you're not going to see a state go wild with with COVID because, you know, they've got people coming from 50 states and 25 countries. So I, I just don't I don't know what the answer is. I don't know what the next yeah, step is. I don't know. I don't know I don't if it either. made it better or worse. I, I, I think that you're going to see cases in the next two weeks. And it's really just going to I feel I think that Bottle Rock instituted those rules because they saw that working. And they at least felt as though the organization of it was sound. And that's what we sort of talked about last week, Barry. You know, is, is that going to make anybody feel better at Bonnaroo? Yeah. No, I, it's I, a weird. I don't know. It's a weird I no thing. I, I think, and I don't want to get too deep into it because the more I, the more I know, the more I know, I don't know. Uh, and, I, and I mean that. And I, I hopefully we're going to have Mr. Jeff Quayar on the, on the, on here with us in a week. Um, and I'm hoping he will share with us what they're going to do, you know, what their plan is. So we'll hear from the actual people putting on the festival and not just you and me speculating, but it is such a, it, the timing is so weird. Uh, I mean, I'm glad to hear you say what you just said. And I, it, it, from all the reports that I got kind of sounded the same thing. It's what I heard. They did everything they could do. You know, we're seeing numbers in some States that was it Florida that just topped their number from a year ago. Uh, now Florida is a, you know, it's its own little animal doing everything you can do is one thing doing it in a, in an uptick with the, the Delta variant makes it a whole nother thing. So I don't know. I, I'm not going to speculate. We're a month away. I I'm planning on going. I, I am interested in your comment about to your, your Saturday. I mean, uh, you know, you, we joke about you and Brittany Howard, but, uh, that's you know how hard that the, was for me to do. I know how hard that's, to not go to that. That's that's a big deal. Kind of why you were there, or one of the reasons. Half of the reason, um, yeah, sure, sure. And uh, so I get it, you know, to be um, worried about it. I'm in a weird, a different situation than you are. Even I'm Taco and I are 55 minutes away. You know, I literally can make a decision day of that person yeah. traveling. It's a whole different. Uh, we don't have a, plane tickets to book. We don't have right. hotels. We don't have yeah. you know, long trips. Yeah, I, I could I could I could go that day or not go that day. I could be home that day, yeah. uh, you know, back and forth. So it's a completely different animal. I mean, has, has anyone has I'm sure they have a live nation, but has anyone asked what happens if somebody gets sick and ill? At Bonnaroo, I don't know. Yeah, we've not asked. What if something yeah, where happens? They, gonna, they and, got a quarantine area. On the they farm? have a they have a ventilator on site. I don't know. I don't know. You know, I I hate to use Barry as a proxy here because God, please don't let this happen. But what if something happens and Barry all of a sudden becomes sick with COVID on site and he didn't didn't know about it and you know he's had the vaccine but he's one of the few breakouts and all of a sudden he needs to be on a ventilator. Why? Why has it got to be me? Why couldn't? Well, because be you? you're the oldest one on the call. Why could have been you? You could have been Brad. Get sick. <laughs> <laughs> this young spry man who would never puke battery <laughs> acid. Hip, I dare say no. Kids, man, this guy is hip with the. <laughs> no, this young you? fertile man. <laughs> Sorry about your luck, Barry. <laughs> yeah, you're R.I.P. Barry Carter. Yeah. <laughs> Dang. No, I don't know. I, that's a good question. And and what would you do if you? You know, so you got in on uh, Wednesday or Thursday, and then uh, I, I don't know how they would test you, but maybe Friday you are sick. What yeah, do they do with you. I and don't then know. look, I know that I know the 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 argument is well, if you've if you've tested negative within seventy two hours, and then you get there on Wednesday, then you're automatically negative for the rest of the weekend. Yeah, that's Come not on. the way I've heard. I don't Come know. On. The, I mean, the, 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 I'm trying look, not to, again, trying not so to be many, the negative. The, I understand, uh, but, but so but I just want to make the, okay. So if, if you think that there aren't people coming in and out, in and out, in and out constantly, just go backstage one day. There are new people just whizzing in well, and true. out constantly. There's new uh, volunteers coming in and out constantly. Um, day campers. The like day, there's, the, the day There's, ticket holders are every day. Those kids had to show that test or that card just because I, I think that I'm trying to say just because you show up negative does not inherently mean you have created a bubble just because everybody you that has just shown up. There are going to be new people. New, and by the way, you know, you still can carry it you know? again. I guess at the end of the day, I, I still go back to what I said before I went to Lollapalooza. And it's the reason why I'm going to go to Bonnaroo. This stuff is available to you. And if you've chosen not to get it, you're putting everybody else's life at risk. 
you're putting yourself's life at risk, right. but life's got to go on and we've got to figure out how to deal with this, even if it's going to take a group of us who are just completely uninformed and, uh, right. you know, batshit crazy about these things. You're just going to have to do it and, and well, live, amongst, I mean, live amongst the crazies. Look, a year, year and a half ago, I was one of those. There's no way I'm taking that vaccine. I don't trust the government. I don't want to put that in my body. And but I want to go to Bonnaroo and other things. And and so I got the vaccine. It was mm -hmm. pure and simple. That's why. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know. I, I still think it's uh, for me, it, it, it's going to be something to watch for the next 30 days. So the other thing, too, that I, I cannot wrap my head around back to these numbers that they gave. 90% were vaccinated on Thursday. I'm going to have to get the rest of the vaccine numbers. I'm sure they might even be out by now of all the people that showed up, what the overall number of vaccinations were. That crowd, and I, I've said it in years past, that is the youngest crowd of any festival I've ever been to in my life. Maybe Governor's Ball is younger. Maybe Hangout feels younger because everybody is just good looking and naked. But um, that is the youngest crowd I have ever seen in my life. And if you look at the percentage of vaccinations for 12 to 25 year olds, it's like at the very bottom of any demographic in the country. So you're telling me that 90 percent of the smallest vaccinated group of the public. Come on. I think I, they, they wanted to go. That Sounds is like a they wanted stretch, to go. I guess. But man, it feels like such a stretch that you're telling me this, the smallest group of vaccinated in the yeah, I see General what you're public. saying. And ninety percent of the you might might have had every vaccinated twelve to twenty four year old at Lollapalooza <laughs> if that's the case. It could be. That's why they and, and again that was the incentive. They wanted to go see whoever their band, their favorite act was, and that was the way to get in. I that's an interesting question. I yeah. I wonder if they did any kind of those sort of surveys other than you out there at the front gate, you know. Asking well, that's what they're the basing. The, that's what they're basing the number on is that, you know, when you hand them a vax card vaccinated, right. you hand them a negative negative test. I mean, they're tracking this in some form of way. The other thing I haven't gotten clear clarity on is when you walked in, did you sign something? Did you write your name down in your phone number for contact tracing as if you could contact trace with 100,000 people? I don't know. Right. Um, and were they even comparing vaccination card with IDs? And I mean, that. that well, no, they so weren't. I, I did literally watch somebody just, just hand a vaccine card and they looked at it. You know, okay. Yeah. Um, so and then the other thing, too, that really was a was a head scratcher. You know, ACLs like this. So I'm sure they'll take the same stance. But you know, Lollapalooza is, is for me driven by so many of the after shows, right? Right. I have to jump through hoops to get into Lollapalooza with a negative COVID test, a vaccine card to get into Lollapalooza. But the Lollapalooza sanctioned after shows, oh, come on in, everybody. Come on in. Don't worry about a thing. There's a, Brittany, I know the Metro, I know Metro is, has been proof of vaccine for the last two months. So you, that's one out of the 12. Um, I know Brittany's show was mask only. But other than that, nobody cared. No mm. venue asked for anything. So how can a, a festival that's sanctioning, you know, a, a Lollapalooza, how can they say have a set of rules for Lollapalooza, but a completely set of different rules for a sanctioned after show? What about the people with you? The uh, the other the other industry people were they at all concerned mask wise did did it come up did y'all talk about it uh, I feel like the industry people are much more concerned about this than the kids um, most of the industry people that I'm around are are older um, they uh, I've been around for a very long time um, look but, they, they, but they yet much you more still went out there. and did everything right you still met with them at dinners you went clubbing with them yeah i, I didn't we interact with a single it. person that wasn't i wasn't i didn't interact you have to be vaccinated to be backstage you have gotcha. to be um there is there's just no there was no way around it either unless you're an artist and i will say this about a artist there is one artist in particular uh, a member of the band is not vaccinated because that person um grew up in a very um let's just say odd uh, childhood and they just don't believe in 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 city life and um non-prairie life i can i guess is a, <laughs> like uh 
And so they were just not going to be vaccinated. Because they're an Amish band out there. Yeah. You know, <laughs> <laughs> it lived in an igloo. Um, but uh, yeah, it's it's a so I know there were artists that were not vaccinated, but you could not be a media member or or part of um, without showing a card. OK, yeah, they, they were pretty adamant about it in the backstage area. Uh, with all that being said, it felt like just a regular year. It felt like every other Lollapalooza year I've ever been at. OK, there it is. That's interesting now talk to me in 10 days I, or tomorrow I don't, yeah i don't know uh glad you went to work though to, to take that back to everybody back at back on the ranch yeah i didn't really think that through did i <laughs> <laughs> but i did it did occur to me um, the amount of so i think that every industry is struggling and ours isn't very much so but i think every industry is struggling with getting their people back to work because they've become so accustomed <laughs> working at home so you know my company in particular has said okay whether or not you're vaccinated or not you're coming back to work september 3rd um, and if you're not vaccinated you're wearing a mask every day and um, you're going to be in a different part of the building than everybody else um, you know for those who have been back to work because they either got the vaccine to go back to work or they did it begrudgingly i gotta imagine these I've come into contact with someone with COVID stories have escalated for the people who want another couple of days of free vacation. Right. Uh, because right, how right. could you mm-hmm. say no to, Oh, your, um, your sister <laughs> that stayed with you had COVID. You know what? Come on in anyway. You know, you wow. should just come on in. Imagine the amount of people that are totally lying about coming into contact with COVID just so they can get a couple more free days at work. This is, Again, we, we live in a, a society that's completely uncheckable with all of this. We're working yeah. on an honor system with half of the public that are completely unhonorable. Yeah. Is unhonorable true. a word or dishonorable? Yeah. I'm, not, dishonorable. I'm not comfortable coming back yet. Yeah, there's a lot sure of you're that. Not. There's, sure there's you're going to be a lot of that. Yeah, sure. that's a great point. I mean, our people were supposed to come back July 4th, 5th, something like that. Um, half of, you know, some staffs are like, can I come back uh, July 15th? No. Yeah. <laughs> no. Well, then I guess I'll just stay here till September. I guess, um, Interesting. Come on. I hadn't thought about that. Come on. Yeah. Well, they, we opened our building back up and one person that I know of is back. One. That's a big shocker. How many, how many, <laughs> how many people are on the staff? Uh, in the newsroom, not a whole, whole lot, probably 30 or 40. And there are four that have been going in this entire time and all of them have family at home and they don't want to be at home with their family. <laughs> <laughs> Either but because me, they like, can't work. I'll, I'll, I'll never take another job if there's no option to work from home. I just yeah, won't do uh, it. There's a you lot know, of like, that. I've heard, a, I've heard from a lot of restaurant people who say that, that, you know, the restaurant people are getting pounded because everyone is thinking they're they're not working because the government's giving them a free check but there are a lot of restaurant people who decided to find change careers sure. uh, in yeah. particular I, I find a job where that. they can work from home and mm-hmm. they you know they realize only fans you can make a lot of money <laughs> well res- restaurants are, i mean I, I don't know if you ever did it restaurant works a, it it'll suck you in because you can make a lot of money in a in a really you know, quickly and it's really cash. quickly and it's cash mm-hmm. and it's hard to give that up if you're really good at it mm-hmm. so you you kind of get i don't want to say stuck but you that's why you find people who end up doing it because they make a lot of money in you know three days instead of five mm-hmm. uh and so th- with this they figured out i can work from home and i like this and so they've changed careers so there's a little bit of that, you know, free well, I mean, I, I think that but. I think hybrid workspaces, I mean, they're going to be here to stay. And, and some people yep. will be getting a different um, mode of operation going forward than the other. And that's going to cause a lot of friction. It's going to why is that guy get to work right. from home? And I don't, um, right. you know, there's there's. But again, I don't know, man. I think that every one of us, no matter where we work, know the lazy shits. We know them and we know exactly who they are and we know exactly what game they're playing. You don't have a doctor's appointment. You don't have a migraine. Um, Every Monday. Every Monday, coincidentally. (laughs) 
I have told this story so many times and it always comes back. Like, so I have this running joke. If, if somebody doesn't show up to work and they're a habitual, you know, lazy, lazy bone, I always say, I wonder if the doors of their car fell off. And I say that because my mom one time worked with this uh, woman. So my mom worked in this office and she was the secretary to the president of this of this uh, this company. And she had to be the person that sort of organized the staff and who's here, who's not every day. She had to, and there was this one lady that just was perpetually late every so every few days, always late, always calling in. We all know this person, right? Mm -hmm. Well, one day she had just ran out of excuses. She had nothing left to say. She had no more doctor's appointments. She didn't lose an eyeball. She just had nothing left to say. So she calls in and I swear to God, my mother, she, she doesn't have it in her to lie. You've met my mother. Yeah, Everything yeah. that just comes out of her mouth is just the first thought that has come out. And it's, it's pure as, as, as moonshine. So she, um, she just says to my mom, Oh, I can't make it today. I'm at the um, I'm at the the car auto shop. The doors of my car fell off. <laughs> <laughs> and my mom said, "What? Yeah, I was driving down the road. My car, my doors just fell off." Nice. And and she said, "Okay." A couple hours later, who shows up? But she's back, and guess what? Looks perfect. <laughs> The doors yeah. to her car. You can peek <laughs> out the window and check out the doors on her car. I heard this. Go ahead. It's Go a ahead. miracle. It's a I, miracle. I heard How a did story. that happen? There were yeah. uh, four college kids went uh, out of town for a party and uh, thought they could make it back on Monday morning for an exam. Missed it. And all four of them told the professor they had a flat tire. And the professor said, okay, sure, no problem. Got them all in four different rooms and gave them a quest a test with one question. How do you change which, a tire? No, which uh, tire? Which tire was it? <laughs> <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah, which tire? Yeah. I mean, I've gotten yeah, pretty know. successful yeah, right. at changing a tire, by the way. I think I can do it in about 15, 20 minutes. What about you? Uh yeah. Well I think so. Yeah. Well. I mean, hell, Taco's changing axles in that bus. Yeah, that's exactly uh, right. I, yeah, you don't want to challenge me to a tire changing contest. <laughs> uh, yeah, so man. what does it mean at the end of the day? What does it mean for the rest of the festivals in the country? Um, I Look, I think festivals are going to happen no matter what. I think Bonnaroo is happening no matter what. The only thing that can change any of this is that you've got a Delta variant that goes absolutely batshit right. crazy, and it starts – you know, taking down breakthrough cases, unlike anything that we have already seen. You know, if this continues to be a pandemic of the unvaccinated, then I, I just, I don't know how much is the world is going to stop for that. Yeah, I think we're past that. I don't think we're stopping for anything anymore. People are too angry. They've done it. They've learned. Like you said, they've learned. Like you said, people were out there with fake vaccine cards. I mean, that's how we do. What we if there's a mask mandate in Bonnaroo? What would you say? Um, I'm, I'm bringing a mask anyways. So if there's a too. mask mandate, yeah, I'll just roll with it. I, I, yeah, but it's going to, that's going to, it's going to bother a lot of people. Not me. Mm. I mean, yeah, well, there, it's going to bother me, but, I, but it's not going to make me stay home. There, um, yeah, there's the other issue. And, and it, I, I, we could do a whole another show on it. How much of what other people, do or don't do gets into your good life anymore. I could, I could get very angry over people not getting vaccinated or not wearing masks or whatever, but it doesn't fix anything. So, I mean, I'm just sort of, you know, take care of me, I guess. Yeah, I guess I, I hear you, but you know, this, this mass thing is becoming real and you've got state legislatures, uh, you know, passing anti-mask Right. Laws, in Tennessee, you know? I think I think our guy is. Yeah, I think our guy is said that you can't pass them, but private entities can. So that that, that actually came up in a social uh, discussion, social media discussion today. Is Governor Lee has said you can't pa you can't mandate it, but private businesses can. Bonnaroo is a private business, but would they go against? I don't know what Manchester would uh, the city of Manchester or Coffee County. So there there's that dynamic.
You know, yeah. here's here's the thing too that um that I think sometimes gets forgotten. You know, there's a completely different culture around Lollapalooza than there is Bonnaroo. Um, the people that go to Bonnaroo, I don't necessarily are going to me feel like the people that are going to be fighting the man uh, who so badly is in, infiltrating their life by wearing a face diaper. I don't right. think that guy is necessarily the the traditional Bonnaroo goer. Look, I think that Lollapalooza is a really, really well done festival. It has its quirks. It has its things that bother people. And I get that. Um, I understand the commercialization of it. I understand the lineups are always iffy for your kind of music versus what, you know, somebody else's. I know that the clientele are usually young. I get the pitfalls of, but it is a major rite of passage for a lot of people. It is an incredible piece for the Chicago economy. But there are problems. I mean, the amount of pickpockets that were reported this year, you can't stand at a stage sometimes without being very diligent about your phone and wallet in your pocket. Mm. Um, you know, I know there are thefts at Bonnaroo, but that's just not necessarily the culture that has been right. you know, no. crafted by the Bonnaroo the, the yeah. traditional Bonnarooian. So Radi radiate positivity. If some of that changes this year, I think that we probably know what to point it to, but I just, I, I just don't know if the Bonnaroo people will be as punchy about whether or not you're wearing a mask or whether or not you need to be vaccinated or whether or not you need to have a negative COVID test. I do know that they do need to probably get their shit together and, and say something about this sooner rather than later. I agree. Um, I agree. I agree. On, because on by the way, the time, the, the time to get vaccinated, that time's over. I mean, that yeah, unless you, you want to get it. that one shot, Johnson Johnson, that, right. you know, efficacy, efficacy is somewhere in the 70 percentile, but you're about out of time if you're, if you haven't been vaccinated. Or not. Yeah, I agree. I, it's a totally different audience. Um, I, I could see them, you know, if masks were required, I could see that being okay. The other, the, the other element is it literally pulls people from all 50 states. So you've got different attitudes coming in. Maybe. I mean, I think the the kids, like you said, the people that come seem to be of one mind, which is, you know, radiate positivity and me, take care of each other. I want to tell you a story about what happened as I was walking down the street to get into Lollapalooza. I think it was on Saturday or something. So I'm walking down Michigan Avenue and I've got to go all the way down Michigan Avenue to the end of the festival to get into my, to get into my entrance. There was a kid holding a box of Bud Light, box of Bud Light cans. He was just holding this box of Bud Light as he was just walking. I guess he, he something must have been going on. He must have done drugs or something, but he's holding this box of Bud Light and just standing there. One guy walks up, just screwing with him. He's like, hey, and tries to grab one of the Bud Lights. This kid loses his ever-loving mind, right? And instead of just standing there like he was standing there. No, now he follows this kid blocks and blocks down the street, just screaming, you know, the, you know, not the F word, but the other F word. And he's making fun of his shorts and his haircut. And he takes one of the beers and throws it at him. You know, it was just like this bizarre explosion of anger out of nowhere. Now um, I'm not saying that that is a traditional <laughs> person at Lollapalooza, but something tells me that this whole world has made people just a tad more on edge yeah, than little, usual. A little of touch. A little bit. I'd like to think at Bonnaroo, he'd have been handing those beers out to whoever wanted one. That's exact. That is a great point. That is a complete difference. That guy was fighting you. He was holding basically just free, you know, like come take some money, but no, right. the second, that's, if you did that at Bonnaroo, Everybody be have a what look at happened at Lord Taco out in the parking lot, just handing out PBRs to people. Yeah, yep. yeah, that uh, yeah, that got a little out of hand, but that was the same <laughs> idea. Like, you know, in the spirit of Bonner, I was like, yeah, I'll give you one, I'll give you one. Yeah, you know, one. some people, some people cross the line. Yeah, one, one, yeah, I'll give you one. Yeah, <laughs> if if you if you take that one, shotgun it, throw it on the ground, and then say, can I get another? Uh -huh. uh, yeah, we've crossed the line. I got you. Yeah, <laughs> there you go. There's uh, there's my there's my Lollapalooza story. Now I wonder if I uh, missed anything. I'm sure I did. I'm sure I. The brain cells are dead. I don't know. I don't know. We're 30 days. We're literally 30, 30 days. days away. Bonner, yeah. Ready. Um. Taco's already packing up. I'm starting to think about I'm it. I'm already packed. I'm already getting packed. Yeah. Wow. 
I have uh, no plan whatsoever. I just, I'm, I'm really, I'm really lost. I don't know. Uh, this is the first time I'm having to do this from uh, far away. So arranging this, I'm now finally starting to, to feel the stress that all the other, you know, people who have done this for a long time, who have come from state to state to state are, are feeling. I, yeah. Now, now you've got the multi-hour car trip. I know. Yeah. I don't even know where to start. Yeah. I think I can speak for Taco when I say we're not driving down there to pick up your extra stuff. So I don't was even... wondering if I could get some stuff in your car. No, no. <laughs> just don't. There's no room know. for me. Yeah, I'm already going to get the couch, the sign, <laughs> the carpet, probably the generator. I've got I don't some other. What else? I've, I've got an extra couch too to add to the. Thing. Oh, there's no room for an extra couch. <laughs> you get one couch. I can bring one couch. We got to talk. We got to talk about all this. The carpet. Who has the carpet? Yeah, we, you know, we got to get logistics down. You know, who's got the mailbox? I got the mailbox. I mean, we okay. need probably need to buy more tents. We always need more tents. We always need more carpet. You know. Yeah. Is everybody's heads in, in? Is everybody's giant heads on a stick? Is everybody's uh, in? In is, is it put together? Do they need to be rehabbed? Yeah. I'm, I've got the marquee. I'm bringing the okay. camp nut butter. Okay. Marquee. Then we're do good. we need new lights this year? Do we need to like rehab? Some yeah, stuff? we probably do. We I know. we really need to talk about all this. Yeah. Oh God. I have a feeling. Uh, you know, all this talking we've been doing about it, I think people are going to be coming pretty strong. So we gotta we gotta this, bring our game. Step up the this game. This feels this feels like fantasy football all of a sudden. That I've got to have some sort of draft for Bonnaroo set up. Yeah. Well, now, isn't it now about the time when we? Well, you know, it's when schedule comes out that we usually meet. Our meeting is always around schedule time, and we don't have a schedule. Looks like our, our meeting this year is going to be at Bonnaroo, uh, considering <laughs> the schedule's never coming. Could be, yeah. All right, All right guys, anything else that I missed at Lollapalooza? No. Any other questions? Glad you made it back. Um, can't wait to see if you get sick. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. It's going to be a great story if you do. Man, Dad, you really do know how to. Share That's the so love. Funny. You really know how to just pour love onto me. I, I, I am going to laugh about you and talking to the, the kids. That's going to be, that's, that's my, <laughs> <laughs> them looking at you. <laughs> What's he asking? I've told you about going to see the EDM tent with the uh, Denson and Dewar and the kids will turn around looking at us. And I'm thinking, they think Narcs. we're cool. Yeah. Mm -hmm. No, they think we're dogs. <laughs> Yeah, he uh, that kid was not um, not the friendliest. I uh, I mean, I don't look that old, do I? Uh, I don't look them, like his dad. To them, probably. Uh, yeah, to them, I guarantee it. Yeah, but I'm the guy that could buy them booze. They need to be nicer to me. I mean, you have your Beavis and Butthead T-shirt. I mean, that's always <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> winger. <laughs> Hey, Journey was there. It would make sense. It would make a lot of sense. Um, yeah, by the way, the Journey show, there, I, I, I was supposed to go to Journey, too, that, that Wednesday night. Or was it Thursday night? I bailed on that, too. Yeah. I, I made some weird choices this weekend, guys. I made some weird choices. Like I've said, as, you know, as long as you got the new Chrome... Gotta get that pictures. new that new setting. There's a new set. There's a new hot cold setting on there that yeah. you really. Gonna... You got the new, the latest right. and the greatest, the European models. You know, it was a successful weekend. Man. Yeah, there you go. That's Barry Corey, Lord Taco, and Brad Steiner. Talk to you next week on the podcast. Everybody.
Consequence Podcast Network.